Sometimes, knowing a certain piece of information is often less useful than being able to figure something out. Here's an example. If you take a point on the edge of a wheel and trace out its path as the wheel rolls, you'll draw out a curve called a cycloid. A cycloid might look like a slice taken out of a circle, but it is a unique kind of curve. So how could we work with this curve and figure out something such as the area contained between the cycloid and the ground? A good way to understand something complicated is to break it apart into simpler pieces. So what do we know about this shape? First off, it was traced out from one rotation of a wheel. Every complete rotation of a wheel takes it forward a distance of one wheel circumference. That makes the width of the shape one circumference. We can measure a circumference in terms of the circle's radius. It takes just a little more than six radii to stretch along the circumference. More precisely, two pi radii. The height of the shape is the same as the height of the wheel, which would be two radii. For the time being, let's ignore the curving sides and trace out edges from the top center of the shape to the bottom corners, making a triangle. The triangle has a height of two radii and a base of two pi radii. We could chop this triangle in half and refit the area to make a rectangle measuring two radii by pi radii. The area is two times r times pi times r, which gives us two times pi times r times r, or two pi r squared. That gives us the centerpiece, but we're still left with two round lobes on the sides. The shape is symmetrical meaning these two lobes are mirror copies of each other. We could fit them together to make a sort of pinched oval shape. We used the circular wheel as the basis for measuring the triangle. So let's see if we can do the same for this piece. The pinched oval shape has the same height as the circle. But what about the width? Both shapes do have a continually changing